ma'am. Um, today, I will be discussing the bacteria Francisella. So here, as you can see, uh, this is an example or an illustration or an image that will see how our bacteria Francisella looks like. So our Francisella species is composed of two species. We have your Francisella tularensis and Francisella philomeragia. Our Francisella tularensis is consists of four subspecies. We have subspecies tularensis type A, subspecies holarctica type B, subspecies mediosiatica, and subspecies nocivida. So our tolerances type A subspecies causes severe diseases, while our subspecies holarctica type B and mediosiatica, they both produce same diseases with type A, but they are rarely fatal. Our subspecies nocivida naman is an opportunistic pathogen. So our Francisella philomeragia, uh, is before known as the Yersinia philomeragia. So the differences in in the, the differences of the four subspecies of our Francisella tularensis is that each subspecies are associated with different geographic regions. So here, here is a table that shows the summary of the subspecies of our Francis of our Francisella tularensis, we have the tularensis subspecies, which primary, which its primary region is from North Korea. Our subspecies Holarctica from Europe, Soviet Union, Japan, and North America. While our subspecies Mediasiatica from Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and Novicida, which is from North Korea, and our lastly Philomeragia are from your North America. So our subspecies tularensis uh, causes most severe diseases in humans. Uh, they are uh, considered as the most virulent for humans with an infection dose of less than 10 CFU per ml. So meaning um, that's just a, uh, a small uh, quantity or number of uh, organism that you may acquire that you can easily be uh, diagnosed or may easily have a diseases caused from your Francisella tularensis. Um, your subspecies holartica, they are less severe, uh, while your Mediasiatica and Novicida subspecies are both severe, and your Philomeragia are the less severe, uh, virulent only in immunocompromised individuals and near drowning victims. So, yes, it, our Philomeragia is only, um, our Philomeragia is only, uh, virulent to our immunocompromised patients yes so now um, let's proceed to the general characteristics of our francisella species so our francisella species they are faintly stained and appear small um, they are gram negative cocobacilli they are non-motil they are strictly aerobic, meaning they require oxygen for growth. Uh, they are non-sporming, spore-forming, and they are capsulated. The capsule of our Francisella tularensis appears to be a necessary component for expression of full virulence of our bacteria, allowing the organisms to avoid immediate destruction by a polymorphonuclear neutrophils. So our Francisella species are also facultative intracellular pathogens that can reside within phagocytic cells. So the direct methods, the direct detection methods that are commonly used for the detection of our Francisella species is we have here um, gram stain. While in gram staining, our Francisella species is it is a uh, little it, it is a little of use um, fluorescent antibody stains are commercially available for the detection of the organisms 
in lesion smears, but such procedures are best performed by our reference laboratory. So it has been recommended that uh, once there are a suspected um, uh, specimens that might have a uh, Francesella species, so it is uh, best recommended to continue its um, to continue its laboratory or to continue its procedure in the reference laboratory. So conventional and real-time polymerase chain reaction has is also been available in direct detection of our Francisella species. So let's go now to the cultivation of our Francisella species. So our Francisella tolerances is strictly aerobic and requires enriched media containing cysteine and cysteine or cysteine for primary isolation. So our Francisella species may initially grow on soy broth agar but they are fastidious and they require supplementation with cysteine or cysteine or thiosulfate for growth on successive passages. So um, it's media that's been um, commonly used for this. Uh, we can use the chocolate agar media. We can use the modified Thayer Martin and the buffered charcoal yeast extract agars and the Miller Hinton and triptych soy broth may also be used so commercial media for cultivation of the organisms are available example for those commercial medias we have your glucose cysteine agar we have bbl microbiology systems the sparks md cysteine heart agar diff collaboratories from detroit niche so both are enriched media and commercial media requires additional five percent of the sheep or rabbit blood so they are francisellas they are slow growing bacteria that require two to four days of maximal colony formation so our maconkey agar and emb agars will not support the francisella tolerances growth that is because they uh this is due to its low growth rate it, it uh, yes it is due to its low growth rate because the uh rf f tolerances uh colonies may not be visible before 48 hours in incubation at 37 degree celsius uh once uh, yes, incubation at 37 degrees Celsius. So that's why it requires two to four days of the maximal colony formation before it will be visible in your agar or in your media. So some strains of the Francisella may require up to two weeks to develop visible colonies. So it can be detected in commercial blood culture system within two to five days. And an arsidin orange stain may be used may be used and is required to visualize the organisms a positive blood culture bottle so so once the uh, the colony of our Francesial species is visible it will appear gray to white raised colonies with a smooth appearance that will be seen later in the picture um, I have some illustration for it to mo to understand more. So let next, um, your Florence uh, Francesella filomeragia is less fastidious than our Francesella tolerances. So they do, they does the our filomeragia does not require cysteine or cysteine for isolation so our philomelar our, our philomeragia has been isolated um, from several patients may may of where um, whom who are immunocompromised or victims of a near drowning incident so why um, included yung near drowning incidents it is because our philomeragia are present in animals and groundwater so they are present in our groundwater so probably when you are swimming in rivers or in any water in any water 
watery areas like rivers or pool or maybe in the ocean that are contaminated with your Francisella philomeragia, then it is possible that you will get infected. So our philomeragia, it resembles F. tolerances in that it is a small cocobaciliary rod that grows poorly or not at all on Maconkey algar. So that's also another, um, another or big differences of your tolerances in your philomeragia. It is that your philomeragia does not grow or it poorly grow. So its possibility in growing in your Maconkey algar is less or lower. So when that happens during your examination in the laboratory uh, you can assume or you can suspect that it's francisella philomeragia but still you need um, a more uh, you need more what you call this you need more tests to to do before you confirm its identity identification so your philomeragia grows well on heart infusion agar with 5% rabbit blood or a buffered charcoal yeast extract agar with or without cysteine. So the colonies, yes, so now let's talk about the appearance of, of the colonies of our Francisella species. They are transparent, mucoid, and easily emulsified. So they are carbohydrates. Uh, they are carbohydrates fermenter. They isolates should be identified serologically by agglutination or by a fluorescent antibody stain. So your Francisella philomeragia is oxidase positive by your COVAX modification. So COVAX modification, that's the one uh, Mom Claire has uh, discussed in our previous topic in And most stains produce hydrogen sulfide in triple sugar iron agar medium. They hydrolyze gelatin and grow in 6% sodium chloride. So again, uh, that is an important key term for our Francisella philomeragia because the, uh, most of their strains, they produce hydrogen sulfide in the triple sugar iron agar medium. They hydrolyze gelatin and grow in 6% sodium Chloride. So here are the indications and in the possible Francisella species. So this is the important key terms that a med tech must know um, when they're suspecting a Francisella species in a in its patient's specimen. So unusual gram stain. Keep in mind that uh, small poorly staining gram negative rods. Seen mostly as a single cells or amorphous gram-negative mass without distinct cell forms, which is, that's your philomeragia. So subcultures yield primarily pinpoint colonies on the chocolate agar. Another characteristic, it is oxidase negative, a weak or negative catalase test. Uh, it is a satellite or X and V test negative. Um, it has a sm uh, it appears small gram negative coca bacillus observed in a gram stained smear of a positive blood culture in which time to detection is longer than 24 hours and your organism requires prolonged incubation on chocolate agar. So those are the indications of a possible Francisella species that you should always remember when you are working inside the laboratory. So here are the images I've prepared. Um, as you can see here at the first top picture this is a uh, example of how the colony of our francisella looks like when it's already done with its um, incubation and with its maximal growth it appears um, it appears uh, gray to white raised colonies with a smooth with a smooth appearance while at the bottom this is your this is your Francisella tolerances that can be seen in your colored scanned microscope. And in the other side, it is also another illustration of how your Francisella species 
looks like. So now let's go to the disease association of your Francisella species. We have here Tularemia. So Tularemia, like anthrax and plague, it is a zoonotic disease. Uh, its causative agent is your Francisella larensis. It was first isolated and described in 1911 when it was found to be the cause of an outbreak in ground squirrels in Tolaire County, California. So the natural infections of your Francisella tularensis do occur from 2003 to 2007. 649 cases were in the United States, more than a third were, and more than a third were in Arkansas and Missouri. Tularemia was not a national reported disease between 1995 and 1999. Its infection to human are almost always by accidental contact with the organism found in water, soil, plants, and animals. Yes, because our tularemia is known as your zoonotic diseases. So when our humans are being infected with this type of diseases, um, it's rarely infected to our to us humans, but that's why it's um, we human serves to have an to be an accidental contact or have the accidental contact to that organisms. So it carrier are so it has carrier yes uh, are by many species of uh, wild rodents, rabbit, beavers, and muskrats, and some of it um, like insects, um, uh, fleas, like that. Uh, its mode of transmission is by handling the carcasses or skin of an infected animal through insect vectors, like what I said a while ago, uh, primarily your deer, flies, and ticks, by being bitten by carnivores that have themselves eaten infected animals or by inhalation. So our, our tularemia um, disease is... Has, is a... So our tularemia or the infection dose of the organism in human is as low as 10 bacteria. So like what I said a while ago, um, less than 10 or equal to 10 CFU per ml is the, is the indicator that you will have a positive infection of a Francisella species. So our Francisella tularensis is highly infectious, which is the causative agent of your tularemia, with as 50 organisms causing an infection through the cutaneous ulcer glandular infection or inhalation pneumonia root and caused mainly laboratory acquired infection. So meaning our tularemia or our rather our Francisella tularensis is very this is a very virulent to us humans especially when working it inside the laboratory uh, it requires strict um, guidelines in testing these organisms so let's talk about the ulcer glandular infection results. So it results from the inoculation of the organism into the dermis of the patient. Uh, it occurs either via the bite of tularemia infected, uh, infested insect or from handling infection material. So when we say ulcer glandular infection, uh, we can get um, its samples from um, the scrappings of, uh, of the dermises yes, uh, in the tissues of your patients. So we have here um, in ulcer glandular infection, it has an incubation period of about 3 to 10 days. Uh, it develops lesion at the site of entry. So meaning, um, kung asa to ni ang portal of entry sa imuhang organism, um, it, will, it will appear, uh, my lesions na mag-appear dito, and it will, uh, it will persist or it will stay for as long as a week or so organisms can be transported to your lymph nodes so hematogenous dissemination can occur 
resulting in multi-organ seeding. So meaning, um, when this hematogenous dissemination already happens to your patient, uh, they could really, I mean, they are really fatal and it could really lead to death. So symptoms do resolve, but resolution occur over a period of month. This is due to that it is because that it is because and due to your patients because they are experiencing uh, malice and weight loss. While in the inhalation of your tularemia, they may also occur in mnemonic, granular, oropharyngeal, oculoglandular, and typhoidal form. So symptoms of this are fever, low, respiration, uh, low respiratory tract infection, similar to an influenza-like illnesses, which will progress to dyspnea, hemoptysis, hemoptysis sepsis, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, sepsis and shock. So here, um, this is an example of your um, tularemia looks like in your cutaneous or in your tissue. So as you can see here in your dermis, morasag, nalata. So here, um, this is the, the summarize of the types of infection that your Francisella species might have and, it, and its clinical manifestation and description. So first, we have your ulceroglandular uh, common, which it, this is the common one. It, it has an ulcer and lymphadenopathy and they are rarely fatal. So we have your glandular, which is also common, lymphadenopathy and also rarely fatal. We have your oculoglandular, conjunctivitis and lymphadon lymphadenopathy oropharyngeal ulceration in your oropharynx, systemic tularemia, um, acute illnesses with septicemia, 30 to 60% mortality rate, uh, no ulcer or lymphadenopathy. So this is quite uh, dangerous for us women. Women? I mean for us humans. Uh, we have the pneumonic tularemia. They are acquired by inhalation of the infectious aerosols or by dissemination from the bloodstream. A pneumonia and the most serious form of tularemia. So now let's go to the biochemical test results of our Francisella species. So here, this is the summarized of your uh, biochemical tests of your Francisella species and their respected um, expected results. So um, our Francisella species, they are oxidase negative. Uh, the, the only oxidase negative is we have your Francisella tularensis, while your Philomeragia is oxidase positive. So that is the one thing um, that that's the one thing um, differences of your bo of your two species of Francisella. Only your Philomeragia are oxidase positive. Um, their urease they are both negative. Their satellite X and V tests are both negative. Their catalase and beta-lactamase test, um, they are weakly positive. Both of them, either motility, um, they are both non-motil. In gram stain, they are both negative uh, cocobacilli and they are both non-spore-forming organisms. So now let's go to the important informations of your Francisella species. So first, our Francisella species um, are biosafety level three conditions should be implemented when working with suspected tolerance samples, especially in culture. Yes, this is because your Francisella species is very uh, virulent or dangerous for us humans. Um, the specimen of choice for your Francisella species that has been uh, given mostly in your laboratories. We have the scrappings from infected ulcers, lymph node biopsies, and sputum. So the isolation of your Francisella tularensis from blood culture might be considered as a potential bioterrorist attack. So the potential of this organism as a weapon was demonstrated during natural outbreaks of tularemia in Europe and in the, and in the Soviet Union during the 1930s and 
40s. So, that's the time na it has been demonstrated as a weapon that can it can be a weapon for a bioterrorist attack. So, um, our Francisella species are considered as your CDC's Category A select biological agent, meaning it is posing a risk to national security because they can spread through person-to-person -person contact or are easily disseminated and result in high mortality rates leading to great public health impact and public panic. It is because they, they are also a big potential for a bio terrorist attack so that's the end of my report and discussion for the Francisella species of the bacteria Francisella species thank you for listening